Hello and welcome to Captain's Dry Dock. And in the Dry Dock today, we're making a teeny tiny version of me. Let's make it real. Or should I say, let's make me smaller. Although that sounds a bit dodgy and not really good for my ego. Let's stick to the original catchphrase. Let's make it real. So you probably already know that there's companies out there that have the technology to 3D scan yourself and have you 3D printed to any size you want. And in fact, you can do exactly the same thing in the comfort of your own home. And all you need is a 3D printer like this one and a mobile phone like this. So this is an older iPhone of mine. You know, the one I actually am using for this entire project I'm filming with, which is the iPhone 12. Now the later models of iPhone, they've got a technology which is called LiDAR, which is actually incorporated in the hardware. And despite that, and this phone doesn't have it, you can still do a decent 3D scan of anything with your current iPhone, depending on the app. And I don't think that's restricted to actual iPhones. It's basically any phone that does the whole facial recognition thing because that still uses the same technology to plot points on your face and therefore you can still use that technology that software which is built into your phone to 3d scan and put out a file that you can put onto your computer and print out as a 3d form so there's loads of apps out there that provide this function and the one i found which i preferred was called em3d and the reason i chose this because it wasn't a subscription-based app. So there's plenty of them out there which charge you on a monthly basis to use something that you probably only want to use once or twice. With this one, okay, it's not free. I think I bought it for around about five pounds. However, that's it, it's a one-off payment and it was super easy to use, which I'll show you later. Okay, it's not the best scanner in the world, but considering it's making my phone, which doesn't have the LiDAR technology incorporated like the later uh, makes of iPhones, it's still works out to be really great for what I'm going to use it for and you'll see the results. So I'd scanned quite a lot by myself and I could not reach all the areas before the thing cancelled on me because if it cut if it's too close too far away or your head comes out of shot completely it just cuts off and you have to start again. The simple solution is get a hold of a friend, they can come over, they get your phone and you start scanning all the way around you and you can be sure that everything is scanned. That's a really good suggestion. However, there's a flaw with this app. Of course there is. It uses the FaceTime camera, the camera that points at you and where you're looking directly into it, which means the person who's doing the scanning always has the risk of actually getting in shot and the app captures them and shuts down and you have to start again. Well, I tried this again and again and again with my fiance and it kept on cancelling. So this is the solution. A tripod, a cardboard box and a stall, which I'll explain later. Now, the reason why I got the cardboard box is because the big tripod I'm using to film this, hence the fact I need to actually use it for this little tripod, because I need to make sure the phone is gonna stay at the same level con constantly as I scan. So because I'm doing my head, it's gonna be at my eye line. And this setup allows me to be able to actually scan the top of my head, put it back down, and this is where the stall comes in. It allows me to pivot to get the 360 degrees. Now, it's, it's, it's not a science, it's tried and tested, but this is the method I worked out that works for me, but you may have different results. First off, I look directly into the camera, and then I press the scan button, and I'll do the top, bottom, and then put it back down, and then pivot. Ready? And scan. Now, one thing I forgot is that I can't move too much, hence the fact I'm mumbling. And then, there you go, put that down, and then, pivot! <laughs> pivot! <laughs> so I'm pivoting, pivoting. And there we go, that actually worked out really well. In fact, I've had better scans than that, but this is how I was able to scan myself on my own and got really, really good results. Next, I need to transfer the file onto my computer so I can clean it up and get it ready to print. Now that we have the scan, I need to clean it up using a 3D program such as Fusion 360. Now there's plenty of 3D software out there that's free to download, and Blender is another one that I highly recommend. But as I'm a Fusion user, I'll be going through all the steps of getting my scan ready for print. 
I need to navigate to Mesh, Insert, and select Insert Mesh, where I need to find the file, which is a standard STL, and then click OK. This is where the realization that it's likely to be the first time anyone's seen their own head in three dimensions, as when you think about it, you only ever see yourself in two dimensions in such things as a photograph or even a mirror. And for the first time, I can see how weirdly shaped my head is. As you can see, I need to clean up the scan as everything below the neck looks like a bit of a mess, almost like an alien. This is because as my shoulders moved during a scan, it was picked up, but that's no problem because really at the moment, I just need my noggin. Also, you'll see as I rotate the scan, it's hollow and there's no thickness to it. So I need to address that first. Navigating to the repair icon, that's the one with the plaster, a panel appears where I need to select the object. And in a drop down menu, select an action. The further down I go, the more intensive the tool will work to fix the scan. However, it will be a longer process depending on your computer's processing power. I'm selecting stitch and remove. This may take a little time, but once done, you'll see that all the holes are closed up and it's ready to be edited or even printed. Next is to tackle the weird mutation around my shoulders. I could leave it there and just hack it off with a Dremel after it's 3D printed, but at this stage, I can just easily remove it digitally. To do this, I just need to navigate to the plain cut button, select the body, i.e. head, which is me, and being Fusion 360, it uses the X, Y, and Z planes, where I need to select one that best matches the line I want to cut. Then it is a case of moving it about now it's not just the head that I'm trying to include, but also as much of the neck as possible, as the neck on the figure may be too slim or too thick for the head, so I'm going to be using my own neck on the figure. Now that I've got it positioned exactly the way I want it, I need to make sure it's a solid object again post-cutting. So from the drop-down menu, I'll select Minimal. My big bald head is now ready to be printed. Although it is massive, so I need to shrink it down Beetlejuice style. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, stop it! Hey, you're messing on there! Come on! Whoa! Whoa! Stop it! Whoa! First, I need to make a guide by selecting the solid in the toolbar and make a sketch on the same plane as the profile of my head. I'm making this 14 by 14 millimeters, which is roughly the size I need it to match my action figure. Pressing the M key, I need to move the head over to the guide. Then select modify and then scale from the drop down menu and then scale the head to fit inside the box guide. Now it is actually ready to export and print, but before I do, I want to make a few more heads at different scales, as everyone's head size is different to the ideal fancy proportions of an action figure. To do this, in addition to pressing the M key to bring up the move panel, I need to tick the create copy box that will copy the head. Then it's a case of moving it to a different position and rescaling as before. I'll make a few more of these later. Once happy, I just have to export the head by selecting it in the bodies menu, right click and select save as mesh as an STL file, which I'll repeat for all the other heads later. Although the 3D file is cleaned up and ready, I need to open it in 3D printer software that is the middleman between the file and the printer telling it how to print. It acts a bit like how you send an MS Word document to a LaserJet printer where you have to tell it the orientation, the quality and other variables so it knows how to print your file. And the final bit is telling the program to slice it so it's ready to be exported onto my USB and then plugged into my 3D printer and then finally printed. Fresh from the 3D printer and I've laid down a ruler so you can see the different scales that I have here. So this is the 14 millimeter head that I first made on Fusion 360 and look at that detail. Now there was hardly any finishing that needed to be done on this like the supports were there at the base of the neck, snap them off. All I need to do now is prime it, paint it, job done. Now look at the resolution. Bear in mind the 3D printer can do a lot more detail than this. The resolution was dictated by the quality of the scan so there's always an argument amongst the community thinking that the 3D printers will never get as good as the quality of the kit but I beg to differ and look at that. Now I'm an only child and now I've got loads of twin brothers, okay, in minute size, but then again, I'm only five foot seven, so yeah, I can count them as one of my brothers. So this is 14 millimeters, 
and this is the smallest at around about four or five millimeters. Look at that in my hand, zoomed in, that it kept every single detail. In fact, here is a one pound coin. So there is the queen's head next to mine. Yeah, the detail is incredible. So you can go down to like a 172 scale figure. So if you want your head on a 172 scale airfix type soldier, you can do that with this. So I'm really pleased with it. Recognize this guy? Yep, it's one of the first order Stormtrooper action figures. To all those Star Wars fans out there, not to worry, this isn't brand new. It hasn't come out of a box and ripped up because I know you love to keep these pristine. This I bought secondhand from eBay just for this purpose. Now, what I had to do is, yep, take off the helmet. So I've ripped off the helmet and I've already attacked the neck of this with a Dremel. So it's small enough to be able to fit inside a cavity of one of these heads, which I'll need to drill into later. And what I need to do now is just go along the heads and see which one proportionally would work with the figure. So when it comes to, to the human body, it works out to be eight heads that make up the entire height of the figure. But then again, we're not all perfectly proportioned. My head is actually a little bit bigger than my proportions of my body. So I need to actually just go along and just work out which size head works. And I think this one. So I'm gonna use this, paint it up, and then drill out a hollow here and pop that onto the neck of my Stormtrooper. So the big finale. Here I am, all painted up. Now, this looks a bit eerie, I know. It looks like medieval London with a head on a pike. Or to be fair, this is actually a toothpick, which helped me paint this up. Now, this isn't the best paint job I've ever done. It's been a while since I've painted something at this scale, but it came out absolutely fine for the purpose I need there. So, yep, all I need to do now is pop me onto that. So, take this out. Now, put some blue tack in there. And then slip me on. There we go. <laughs> this is looking really eerie, to be fair. Really strange. Now, I think you'll agree. I think I got the proportions right. And again, if I've got it wrong, I can always go back and just do another head. But I think that works. I think I might need to trim down the neck a little bit more. But overall, yeah. That's really, really good. And what I need to do now is put a blaster in my hand. And bear in mind, this is the strange thing. If you see my YouTube channel, you will see I'm in the progress of building a one-to-one -one scale armor kit of the First Order armor. And I'm almost finished, check that out. And now I can see what I might look like when I wear the entire thing. That's right, look into my eyes. You've caught me painting a little Warhammer 40k figure of me. So as it turned out, I've got so many little versions of my head at all different scales, I thought to myself, I don't want to waste them. So I went into the cupboard and cracked open my old box that contained my old hobby, which was playing and painting Warhammer 40k figures. And the head matched the scale perfectly. And right now I just stuck it on and I'm painting it right now and it's gonna be so cool. So if I ever play a game again, one of those soldiers is basically me. No doubt it will get shot, but it looks so, so cool. And in regards to this, yes, at the time of filming, I am now 43 years old. And many years ago when I was playing Games Workshop, I didn't really need any glasses or magnifying system. But I realized I'm gonna have to give up the ghost and invest in a pair of these, which is fantastic. It's even got a little light. I might do a review on this sometime. Anyway. <laughs> cool did they turn out? It was much, much better than I expected. I saw some other examples online and I thought to myself, 
give it a go. I've finally got a technology with the 3D CAD software and the 3D printer and combine that with my artisan games workshop painting skills and see what happens. And it turned out better than I expected. The only sad thing about it is, is that I wish this technology existed or was more accessible when I was younger because you guaranteed I would have had all my friends and family's heads on my Star Wars action figures and my games workshop soldiers. So if you really enjoyed this episode and you haven't already done so, here's the whole YouTuber fluff. Click the subscribe button down below where you'll get an alert of the next video. And if you have subscribed, again, I say it on every episode, thank you so much. It really means a lot for me knowing that someone out there is watching this and hopefully enjoying it. So click on the like button or even a comment down below. And if there's anything I skipped across that you need to know more details about and you want to try this yourself, by all means, just give me a message. I'll be happy to reply ASAP. In the meantime, this is Captain's Dry Dock. My name's John Child, and now I'm playing with myself. You take care and you stay safe. Bye.